So apparently Kevin's a little concerned here, and he doesn't have a whole lot of faith in the motor. It might have something to do with the round bolts. I don't know. They look like 15 mils. Well, I mean, you know. Oh, that's that's salt. That's not even real rust. Well, actually, the the bulb is actually smaller than you think. This is the actual bolt. It's just the continuance of it. You think they use smaller bolts on each side, different size bolts? Because those are 9 16ths over there. Well, we'll figure it out. I mean, the hex is the hex. It's yep. whatever they use. We got time. Okay, so this is where we're at. We got the donor motor. We got these bolts here. The old motor mount bolts, I'm sorry. That round one there and that round one there. They're gonna be an issue. But we got two out. So, gonna go from a four bolt main to a two bolt main on one side. We had a similar issue over here. We got these two bolts on this side out. Those two don't want to come out, but this motor mount is good. So we're going to stay with this. And of course I totally screwed Kevin over because I had to go to work today. So he's been playing with this for the last two hours, but that's all right. All right, H2 motor swap documentary video. We're going to do this again once we get this big cover off. So, these lines in the back can stay. We have a couple of plugs that have to come out of the back of the motor. Tranny dip stick can stay, oil's coming up. We have this main plug here that plugs into the coil packs. Four coil packs, but we're lifting this whole rail off. We're saving all these coil packs. So those, uh, we can just put aside. Well, no, we're gonna pull them all off. Doesn't really matter. Here's the AC lines. We're gonna try to remove the compressor and stick it to the side. We have uh, that same crusty line right there. We have a crusty line on the other one, so no sense in replacing that. This plug that follows here goes up here in the intake. This will all be gone. This all comes right off. There's really not a whole lot to see on this side. We got this bottle will be coming off tomorrow. Radiator, all the plastics will come off. Yeah, there's not a lot over here. What is that? Oh, that's for the brakes. These, uh, these look like some sort of airbag sensors. Horn will come off with this brace. We're gonna try to keep the condenser and the oil. Just pull the radiator and maybe if we just pull that out the way i don't know if we're gonna what we're gonna be able to do but we'll find out here light light plug for the turn signal anything under here here's some fucking here's the brake lines not worried about them This will obviously get much cleaner once we get all this junk out of here. I think this is my main computer. Fuse box. Here's the main computer. Here's the big main wiring harness that goes up underneath. It's clipped in right there. Uh, coil packs, da, 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 fuel injectors. These two lines. So speedometer cable, uh, not speedometer. Uh, Fuel, not sure. Uh, the exhaust, I gotta start spraying that. Here's all this all clicked in now. This was our culprit down. Wait, no. Yeah, is that the oil cooler line that fell off down there? I think so. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, it is. Is that the one? Don't know. I thought it was lower. Let's see. 
alternator, alternator bracket. This is all, this is staying on. Power steering. Alternator. Did he take off that big bracket? So this is what was decided. It's just easier to drop this thing down to the long block. We can leave the water pump on. That shouldn't be much of a problem. But if it is, yeah, we'll cross that bridge later. Because the whole intake and all the wires and everything, they come off with literally 10 volts. And we are going to order new gaskets. I think they're usable, but we're going to do it correct. As correct as possible. Because all of our shit works. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it sometimes. works. You know. But, well, you know, for like 50 bucks, we'll just get them. It'll just be easier. And we think we're going to be able to do this by leaving the air conditioning compressor in. And uh, well, we'll find out. We might need to pull that pump to get the extra room, though. We'll see. Or maybe just a fan. We'll have to see once we get the hood off. If, yeah, if the fan can come off easier, just pull the fan. Yeah. Okay. No, fan. Uh, I, just, I looked at it quick and I, I was like, I don't yeah. know. How much. All right, so here we are. Homer, day one, pretty much. First thing you do is get rid of the hood, which is not a two-person job. We're going to use the lift just to make our lives easier. And we'll see how it goes. Kevin will strap it up. I'll be working on some bolts inside. All right, Tonka looks mean. We might have to roll just like this. All right, so we're gonna unbolt all this, take this cross member off. We gotta get that stupid plastic out, which I think uh, is gonna be from the fan. But while I'm here and stuff's accessible, let's just go through. Look Nickel's at some. worth of free advice. Record everything. <laughs> and also put a piece of wood in your uh, hinge assembly so it doesn't. Yeah, so you don't get bear, bear trapped. Bear trapped. All right, so we'll get this out. We'll get the radiator out. Disconnect the oil cooler lines, trans cooler lines. Well, the one bottom oil line should come out really easy since that's the culprit of why this motor blew up. So, all right. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to take this fan off to uh, 
to get that. All right. What do these go to? This? All right. Next, we're going to do the core support. A couple look like 10 mils. Condenser. Oil cooler, I guess. What is this? That's Tranny right. cooler? Trans uh, it could be power steer. It could be all sorts of shit. Either way, let's stay in there. We're just unbolting it to get this core off. Right. So just five, five. 9 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths. We're recording in case we have to go back. And we have thunder. And we have thunder. That's all right. We have stuff to do inside. Just waiting on a radiator for Van Damme. Wonder if this will fit. We just throw this radiator in. All right. So we got the radiator out. We found it's easier to take the radiator out and then take the plastic piece behind it out, so you don't have to take the fan off. We are going to be disassembling everything off the front of this motor before we pull it, and we're going to be dropping the AC condenser off to the side so that we don't have to mess with the AC system, which will save us a lot of money in the long run without having to disconnect that. We are going to do it with the condenser still in place. So what we're going to go over here is just basically you know, hosing, wires, stuff like that. For the most part, all the wiring is just going to fall into place. Uh, we're going to pull the, the entire intake off, leaving all the fuel injectors and everything in place. That'll make life a lot easier, I believe. So we got this heater hose. The one on our right, looking at it, goes to the left down here. Obviously, the one on the left is going to go to the right. Down here, that obviously goes to the bottom of the radiator. We have the trans cooler lines over here. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're leaving that line there. There's really not a whole lot on this left side. This line here that came off the bottom of the intake, this goes to the, into the radiator. That, go, that go, line is still on the radiator. Down. Slow down just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. We are going to be pulling, uh, we got to pull that off. Yep. That mount, that's simple. We'll throw that out of the way. Braking system remains. We're going to go underneath and disconnect it at the collector, the exhaust, because we're going to probably wrap around the exhaust to pull the motor. I have to look, but... Because uh, we're not going to get a bolt on the back of the valves, not where it's at. Okay. We have... Uh... Let me go up here and see what else we're going to have. Okay. We have this line here that comes off the top of the valve cover. It goes into the top of manifold up here uh, a couple little things that weren't on our motor that we had to pay attention to this main wiring bracket I mean yeah wiring harness gets mounted up top and then it splits so we'll probably pull this off in case we need to unclip anything do you want to look at the belt the belt routing before I pull yeah off? belt routing's pretty self-explanatory but we'll start at the alternator. We're gonna go down around the power steering, back up to the fan. Right? No. Yeah. Back up to over the fan. Then it's gonna go down. Looks like it goes back around the crank. And then over the tensioner. Then yeah, then back up over the tensioner. Okay. And then uh, the rear belt is pretty simple. Over the crank, around the AC pump, and then up and over the tensioner. Let's see if I can get in there better. Yeah, crank, belt, tensioner. That one's simple. This one's, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory anyway. So yeah, let's yank that belt. We yank the fan. And uh, so far we don't have to worry about anything under here. These wires are gonna have to come off wherever they go. We'll just pull this whole bracket off of here. Leave the battery in its place. And as we get more off, we'll just take more video so we don't forget where we're at. Yeah, yeah we gotta put the, we'll put the belt on before we put the radiator and all that on. We're just gonna work our way backwards, just mm -hmm. following the video. Yep. All right, we'll get some more stuff out of the way. No need to record, you know, taking off the bracket, shit like that. We'll go from there. This video is about the power steering pump. We're going to be removing this line right here, which is the main line, high pressure line, which 
goes up the frame and then back to the pump. And then I'm going to be removing this line, which is the return line. And that line underneath the clamp, that doesn't even go to the power steering. No, it does it's probably not. That's, oil return. That's, this is the oil. This is one of the oil um, okay. um, cooler lines. All right. So yep. I'm going to be removing this bracket with the power steering pump. Taking the return hose off, which is this one, and the main line off the box. That's about it. All right, easy enough. Hold on, be on the tranny. Okay, for the uh, power steering pump, this hose with a corrugated um, piece on here. Wire loom? Wire loom. That might be aftermarket. <coughs> goes to the, um, the lower portion of the... Um, um, hold on. This does go to the lower fitting on the uh, power steering pump itself. This hose right here that goes up to the hydro boost goes to the uh, upper fitting on the power steering pump. And the third hose? <coughs> third hose the have third wrapped hose up there. That's where up we there. drained that, it. Yeah, that that's going to come back that, down and screws into to the, the and screws into the back of the power steering pump. Okay. That'll be it. Okay, so here's where we're at. Tonka, pretty much day two. We got the whole front torn down. Threw the AC to the side. We did get the exhaust bolts off. We took the whole exhaust off this side. Gonna be working on this side today. Kevin's gonna do this while I jump underneath and try to get the trans on done. And then we're gonna go through Look at some clips, plugs, stuff like that. And go from there. Let's see any wiring? Clip out of there. Kevin knows where that goes. What is this? It's a dipstick for the tranny. Uh, most of these clips are all. There's only one main clip here that goes in. So, I'm pretty much going to try to take this manifold, just kind of flip it to the side out of the way that'll eliminate a lot of wiring so I'm gonna jump underneath Kevin will jump on the top see how far we get okay we're under the vehicle from the tranny at the motor one of the shittier bolts to get out is going to be on the passenger side there's the first big one second one up you're gonna have your two tranny lines running here there's the bolt inside there. Hopefully, if you're doing this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I found the best way is to disconnect these tranny lines down here on the motor. Split the lines up top here. Use a 6 inch adapter on a 15 mil socket, deep socket. And get your wrench up here. Right between the cat and the tranny, pretty much. You can only do one click at a time, but it's pretty much the only way I figured out to get this one out. This is one of the crappy ones. And I'm sure the next one up that has the transmission dipstick on it, that's not going to be fun either, but we might be able to attack that from the top. Okay, for this upper tranny bolt on the passenger side, a little hard to see with the sun, we found that uh, having someone push the dipstick towards the passenger side to get that bracket out of the way. The easiest thing to do is use a pass-through ratchet with a 15 mil. And it cracks free pretty easy. It's just getting to it with the bracket in your way. That's the only hard part. We'll get this one off and we'll look for the next one. All right, here we are on the driver's side of the transmission. And your last train bolt's gonna be way up top there. Not sure how well you can see it. It's got a bracket on it, and this is one of those bolts that has a 13 and then a 15. So, I can't even get the camera up there to really show you where it is. But we use basically like a two foot extension all the way back to here. Let me see if I can get a better view. Up in there, that's the last tranny bolt. That's the top of the driver's side. You're going to have a 13, then you're going to have a bracket that holds I don't know what, and then you're going to have a 15 under it. 
So really the only accessible way is with a big like 18 to 24 inch extension and go back here. Okay, so at some point once you get the intake off, you're gonna find these two little sensors here. And they come on a plug and this is pretty common on these motors that people just cut this. So we transplanted them from the old motor onto this motor. Basically all you have to do, you gotta be very careful and pull this black cover up this wire. Try not to rip it or anything. Same thing with that. We actually kind of scrape down with a razor blade just to make this nice and smooth. So here's the old one, which as you can see is cut. All you have are these multi-directional sensors in there. They can spin around, they just clip straight down. And the easiest way to get them off is the little, the fatter tabs, you have to kind of squeeze those to open it up to get it off. And your fingers are not gonna fit down there. So use a screwdriver on one side and then your other finger on the other and these should just pop right off. And that's it. All right, one of the last things to do before uh, going after the, well, we'll pull off the starter and then we'll go for the motor mounts. In the very, very back of the motor down here, you have your main grounding strap and then you also have another ground coming off this harness. So once we redo these, the whole harness should be able to move right out the way. Yep, one ground there. This whole cable we can just get rid of. And this cable, it went, I think it went up here somewhere. Grounded out, yeah, right next to the lab. Okay, back under the Hummer. Uh, we have these two plugs up here that we're gonna undo. This blue one goes to the bottom. And then this other one goes up top. And we're gonna trace right, it around. Here we are on the passenger side again. We have a clip up top. We have a little clip here. Up here you're gonna have a 10 millimeter bracket you gotta take off. And then just keep working your way forward. Oh man, fucking battery, motherfucker. Oh, we gotta definitely record it. Yeah. Uh. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if this puppy knocks loose. for the moment that we've been waiting for. Go back and we're gonna get up. Okay. okay, so we had to go up sideways and that seemed to work. I think you're clear. Yep. Kev? By like an inch. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, you need help? Nope, I'm good. Just gonna go slow. That's. I'm gonna go grab a tire and we're gonna pop this puppy down right over there and uh, screw this motor. Let me get this on here. Yeah, remember, oh yeah. You gotta really go slow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wanna hurt the goods. Well, there's no goods left on that motor except for the torque converter. But there is my driveway. Actually, you know what? Let's look at it like, like this. Um. Uh, let's get some paper towels and just jam them in there. There's a bunch. Okay, we're gonna be able to use thin wall wrenches and get these off uh yeah they're probably 15 mil there's only three that's a bonus isn't it yeah. <laughs> damn i'm fucking kind of debating on if we should just uh put the torque converter in with uh, the new motor you sure there's not three and not like six because these look like they're all on contact i don't know maybe it's a different flywheel 
I could be wrong. This is a different torque converter. Or a different flywheel. I don't know. Alright, so a slight problem. Motor's locked up. We can't spin it. On the back side, we have three 15 millimeter bolts that we have to break free. Two are broke free. This one's starting to strip. So we can almost get a wrench in here. So basically, we're just going to shave maybe a sixteenth of an inch off the wrench so, so we, we can get it on there, use the box end, and break it free. I mean, we're really close, but not quite. So we'll be back. All right, so we skipped a little bit, but we got the torque converter off. That's all safe over on the floor. Here's the wrench that we ground down. See, we took uh, probably a sixteenth of an inch off the top, and it was just skinny enough to get in there, get the bolt free. Torque converter's off, flywheel's off. Now we're gonna clean the engine bay and move on. Okay, so what we got here is we have two of the motor mounts are good, two are snapped. So we're just gonna drop a little weld on there and she'll be good to go. Make sure it's not upside down. <laughs> that would suck. This side of the motor mount was kind of crusty. We tried loosening it, it didn't want to go. So we just left it, because this motor mount's good still. Well, is it, uh, it's going right where it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll Except this is not the right size. Top, maybe. Well, I don't know if that wobble's gonna help you. That's tight enough. How about we get rid of the wobbles? Yeah. That's a 15, right? I mean, it's... Oh, that's not. Oh, wait. Do we want to even use that bolt? That bolt looks no. really shitty. No, it's not. All right, okay. so here we are. Motor mount is on there. For life. For life. So we're going to go through, just touch it up, make it look pretty. How much horsepower is this at? Um, combined 16. How do you come to that? Well, uh, in the beginning, we gained six horsepower because of all the shit that fell off it. Oh, cars. rust reduction. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, this place. And then the 10 horsepower is the um, VHT engine enamel. Okay. Because there's like a race motor on there. Ah, uh, so they even got a ghetto yeah. charger. It's got a ghetto charger. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this, so, this adds power. So this Plus will... the flames make it like faster looking. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, basically we're going to be... Uh, this goes from, uh, I mean, it's actually like this is going from like a 364 to like a 366, I'm thinking. So, yeah, it'll look pretty. Well, it's got a bigger bore because, yeah, war, it, it, it's pretty, pretty enjoyed. Yes, yes. And a little uh, tech tip if you want to um, do a quick spray job on a motor, a Bondo card works really good to put right at the surface here. And look, nothing on your aluminum heads. Or you could tape. Yeah, tape don't stick for shit sometimes. Yeah. I'm wondering what this is going to look like once we actually drop it into place. Like how much paint falls off. Oh, we're, well, we're probably not going to see anything because, yeah. you know, all the shit, you can't yeah. see it. It's like a, a yeah, big GM. fucking trash can cover over the motor and... Uh, yeah, GM does like their plastic. I mean, honestly, we're really doing this just to maybe stop a little bit more of the rust. We are in an um, area where it's... Uh, you know very salty and, and everything else and right yep. by the ocean and so all seriousness we're, we're just trying to put a little uh uh encapsulation on this if you will yep welcome to the jersey shore here's your tax bill here's some rust exactly it's not like this out in arizona is it no no just everything just gets boiled just gets boiled to death yeah pretty much yeah.
So here we are, day three. Polish up day. Got the intake, coil packs, belt, water pump, generator or alternator. What else, Kev? Um, everything. All the clips, grounds, probably bolts we put on that we're gonna have to take off and reground. Re everything we have to remember. Yep, <laughs> that's why we have the video. I was just looking at it for what I need down below, so I'm gonna go and, down below. Hey, you know what? There's a whole bunch of water down there. Uh -huh. It's all dripping. As long as it didn't get up there, that's all that matters. Yep, nothing got up there. Had a pretty big rainstorm last night, and uh, at least yeah. we protected it. Yep. Not a drop on the top. Yep. Hey, that kind of rhymed. A little bit. Oh, I didn't know it, but I'm a poet. Well, I'm going to go under here. I think I'm going to get myself a nice new piece of Lowy. Put the battery on. We just got the starter. You got to make sure it doesn't start itself because that's happened to me once before. And all you got to do is tap the brake. So go ahead. I'm going to hold my foot on the brake, actually. I'm just hitting the brake because we got power now. Yep. I think we're getting, do you hear any fuel going? I hear stuff going along, but I don't think it's going to be a real, all right, try it. Uh... Holy shit, Clifford. This is the first startup. This is not something we started. <laughs> yeah, Amazon like, just came five minutes ago. Like, well, about 10, but. Yeah, 10. We had to put the starter in. Yeah, I think we have to. this shit up. <laughs> we might need a. Uh, Maybe a little exhaust leak. Remember, we got that one bolt in the front? Yeah. Wow. How amazing. Dude, you guys said it ran. You guys said it ran. Make sure we're not. Ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm getting uh, the fucking tranny fluids leaking out. Yeah, I'm doing oil pressure. Oil. About full, 35, 40. No check engine lights. What's the oil pressure? It's about 40. Good. All right. Oh, man. I'm going to the auto parts store. We got to fix that. All right. So here we go. Version test ride. No check engine lights. Only an airbag light, which we had earlier. Idling fine. We haven't taken it down the road yet. So I'm going to hand this off to Kevin. All right. Throw my seatbelt on. Idle's a little bit low. It's idling at like 600 or so. But maybe hopefully it'll kick up and not stall. I have never driven this vehicle. Not with these tires. I drove with the last, the 40s, and it sucked. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're going straight. It's like sideways. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, there's the check engine light. And a blinker. Yep. Well, the check engine light, I ran the codes and it was like an oxygen sensor. Ah. Uh. This is definitely our test drive street, as you'll see in our other videos. A little bit of a hill, so you kind of have confidence you can roll on home. <laughs> yeah, besides the alignment, it does drive much, much better. Like, I feel like I'm kind of going straight. You know, yeah, I think, uh, I think I have a loose 
this blinker. The engine light's going in and out, but I know that was an O2 sensor. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hit that. Ah, uh, we would have barely felt it. Yeah. But we got, uh, looks like the gauges are doing good, right? Yeah, we got speedometer at least. We got, uh, oil pressure. Oil, oil pressure, or... yeah. Uh, tranny, it even has its own separate transmission, uh, temperature sensor. Fuel is, you got a quarter tank. Kind of like a uh, circle track car, always making a left. That's what it feels like, but I mean, this was set up for those big 40 inch, 18 inch wide tires. Yeah. Oh, the brakes, uh, I think they got a, these are hydro boosts. A little tiny exhaust leak, you hear it? Yeah, unless that's a, uh, is that, uh, is it one of the little motors running? Oh, I here? don't know. I mean, here, did you see this? Dude, it's like a fucking one of your little ghetto horns. It doesn't work. Breaker 1-9. This is Little Beaver looking for, who are we looking for? I don't know. <laughs> snowman? The snowman. <laughs> Well, this does run drive so much better with these tires than what I remember from eight months ago. Well, we're almost at our uh, destination, the friend's house, and we'll uh, we'll be back. Are you ready? You want to get the deer? You, go get the deer. Go get the deer. No, over there. Over there. Kaloa. Kaloa. No, Lou. The deer. Who's on top? Get back here. Get back here. Kaloa. Lou. Who's in the camper? Who's in the camper? Get in there! <laughs> Fucking idiot. She got chased after that. Oh my god! So much going on! You see her?